So how do you turn water into music like this? If you ever seen someone play on sort of like fruits and vegetables and you know they're actually making a beat machine out of those fruits and vegetables and different items, it is basically the same thing. So I'm gonna show you how to use that science to actually create, you know, music. So today in this video, I'm gonna show you some of the behind the scenes of how the science works. So why is this even possible? And then I'm gonna share some of the tools and sort of the devices and the boards that I'm working with so that you can acquire some of the same boards and tools and actually do it yourself. And I'm going to show you how I hooked it up myself, this contraption right here. And then after that, I'm basically just going to show you the program that I'm using to actually make things run. So let's go behind the scenes and actually talk about why this works. And one reason why I want to show you exactly the science behind it, why I think you should know, is because when you're sort of doing troubleshooting with an art installation or, you know, you're trying to make a contraption like this or whatever, and it doesn't work, you know, you want to know exactly the science behind it so that you're able to troubleshoot better and fix things. So I made a diagram just sharing a little bit about how it works in the lamest terms. Everything that we do when we're playing on fruits and vegetables or you know cups of water, we're basically making a capacitive sensor. And a capacitive sensor basically just measures the capacitance of a circuit. And capacitance is basically the ability to hold a charge. So like our body, when we're rubbing our feet across you know, carpet and we're able to shock someone, that's because our body can hold a charge. So a lot of items have the ability to do that. So like this marker right here has the ability to do that. Fruits, water. So basically when we create a circuit with fruits and vegetables and water, you know, we're hooking it up to a board like this. This is the bare conductive board. That board basically sends a signal to itself. It sends a signal on a circuit um, for like five volts and it goes through a resistor and then it comes all, all the way over here to basically, you know, the cups of water that we're using or fruits and vegetables, comes back to the receive of that board and says this is how long it took for the five volts to go around to get back to the board. Because the water and the fruits and vegetables have a capacitance, you know, it's going to take a certain amount of time. We create a normal state. So that's basically the state of the capacitance right then and there. And then we do it again, but this time we have a finger introduce itself. Like I said, our body has the ability to hold the charge, to hold capacitance, to hold energy. So now when that five volts goes around, it just takes longer because now our finger is in the water and now, you know, it's charging our finger as well. Now our finger is touching the fruit, you know, it's basically our body holds a capacitance, it increases the capacitance of the circuit. So now it takes a lot longer. This board can tell, okay, this is the normal state, this is the change state because it's taking a lot longer let me do something or let me alert something. And that's where all the programming comes in to where we can tell it to do whatever we want to based on it saying, hey, there's been a change in that normal state. Someone introduced a finger, someone introduced something to the circuit that increases the capacitance. So we're able to basically say, hey, a finger has been introduced, someone's touching the water, someone's touching the fruit. Let's play this beat, let's do this sound, let's turn off this light, let's do whatever. This is how the contraption just works behind the scenes. This is all it is. And you can add more cups of water, you can add more fruits and vegetables. And then once you get that normal state on the board, then when people introduce their hand or another item, you know, it change and then trigger an event to happen. So that is how this board, how these circuits, how a capacitive sensor works. It's the lamest terms is how our phones work, how a lot of like touch screens, that's the same thing. But you know, they're more complex, of course, but this is basically the, the basic lamest terms on how, you know, these capacitive sensors works, especially in our case right now. Now I'm just gonna show you exactly what I use to build this contraption. You don't have to have exactly everything, but if you do, it does help. First off, we have the bare conductive board. You can get this one online. I'm gonna show you exactly where to get it in a second, but this is basically a capacitive sensor board made for creative projects. You then want a micro USB to hook up the board to your computer. 
And then of course we need our plastic cups. This one is like the hard plastic and you can get these at most of your local grocery stores. And then we're gonna have a hot glue gun with some hot glue sticks. We're gonna use this mainly just to glue stuff down. And then have some quick setting epoxy we're gonna use as well. And then I have a soldering iron and some soldering wire. I also have 22 gauge hookup wire and then some regular nails that you'll need. I also have a terminal block if you're going to do multiple sort of items. And then I have a platform so you can use a platform if you want to or not. And then the coloring die. And for this software side, we're gonna use a program called Ableton. It does cost, but there is a free trial, so we can just use it for this project. And then an open source program called Arduino. So that's something that I always use. So definitely I'll show you where to get that. So the first thing we want to do is to strip the end of that wire and wrap that wire around that nail. We're just gonna solder it to the nail just to make sure that we have a solid connection because we're gonna use this nail to sort of just run through that cup so that the water has a connection with the circuit board. So just take some time to solder it, make sure there's a solid connection right there. Then we're going to use a soldering iron to puncture a hole through that hard plastic cup, mainly because we're going to use that hole to sort of slide our nail through so that the nail actually is surrounded by the water and we have the wire on the other side so it's actually able to have a connection with that circuit board. So use your hot glue gun to sort of glue the outside of the water cup and then we're going to use that sort of quick set epoxy to sort of rub around on the inside. I use quick set epoxy mainly because it's like hard plastic and then it sort of feels better than the actual sort of hot glue gun. It feels like I never had a leak. And another note is don't cover the entire nail with the epoxy. We need some part of the nail to be exposed to the water because that's going to conduct the electricity. And then you want to take the other end of that wire and connect it to the terminal, especially if you have multiple items that you want to sort of uh, play on or connect. But if you only have one, you can easily just connect it directly to the bare conductive board. You can see here I had a ton of different items. That's why I like using terminals. It's easy install and easy to install when I'm trying to change up items. Now we're just going to connect that micro USB to the board and then the other end to our MacBook or a laptop, whatever you're using. And now comes the fun part where we're just downloading stuff. And the first thing that we want to download if you don't already have it is Arduino. And this is basically like an open source sort of software way to program. And we're gonna use this to upload the code that Bear Conductive will give us to the board. So just uh, go to that download page and follow the link, figure out what sort of system you're using click on it and you're easily able to download it you know you can donate if you want to I'm just gonna click download right there and just download it really quick now we want to venture over to the bear conductive website just throw in bear conductive and then on the website if you scroll all the way down to the bottom at the footer there's going to be a product sort of resource page so you're just gonna click on that product resource page and look for that touch board so that's what we're using we're using the touch board and if you look at it, you're going to see the touchboard IDE and then you're going to look for the system that corresponds with what you're using and then click on that. A download link is going to pop up. So just click on that, download it and it's super easy to install as well. So after you install the Arduino IDE, uh, this is basically going to sort of give you everything you need to upload all the example code that we need. So now that you have everything installed, just open up Arduino and go to the top where it says file, go to sketchbook and then you'll see a touchboard drop down link. We're going to look for that MIDI interface. So hit that MIDI interface once you find it. And when you sort of open that up, it's going to open up a new window and that is going to be the code that we are going to upload to the touchboard to have everything work. And right now I'm just highlighting those numbers right there just to show you where the MIDI notes are. And if you understand MIDI, you can change up the notes that 
basically you're able to use with the cups of water. And then down here, once you start to understand and code a little bit more, you're able to sort of change up the sensitivity of the board. So, you know, it can trigger when your hand's a little bit farther away, or you can make it to where you need to be actually touching something to actually trigger. So what we have right now is the default and that's good enough for, for what we're gonna do. So we're just gonna compile the code, just make sure everything's sort of working right. And if you get an error, you just have to change up the board. That's probably what it is. Just go up to tools, board, go to that drop down menu and you'll see the uh, the bare conductive MIDI bus. So just hit that one as well as go down to the port and make sure you're on that USB uh, modem port right there. So that is basically the two sort of changes you'll need to make. And then you can hit that upload uh, button right beside the compile button right there and just upload that code to the Arduino and let's watch it upload. So now that it's uploaded, we can actually touch that nail and see this light go bananas and it's gonna turn on and off and you can actually hit some of the other nodes. Let's throw that water in there as, and you can tell as I threw the water in there, that light in the background is kind of blurry change. So we can just turn that on and off to now create that normal state with the water in there and then we can start touching the water. So yeah, so let's try to touch that water, see if it changes. Yep, it changes right then and there. So now that we know that it is working, you can actually add more cups to this setup if you want to. We're just gonna work with one cup for right now. And I wanna show you that you don't even have to be touching the water to actually trigger the board. You can actually just touch the side of it. That's how sensitive it is. And look at this, the marker that I was using to explain everything, I'm touching that with the water. Now let's add the dye to it and just stir that around for a little bit just to get some color in there. You can use any dye that you want to. You can even use food coloring. Anything kind of works with uh, this setup. And now the last thing to do is to add music. So let's go and find that Ableton. So all you have to do is Google Ableton right here and you'll be able to see basically the website. Click on that website. Ableton is a music production software. It's one of the most popular so everyone knows it. and it really works well with these interactive elements uh, that I've been using in sort of the tech space. So that's why I really just love using it. You know, you're able to do a lot with it, but they have a 90 day free trial. So at the top of it, you can go at the top of the website, you can go click that link and just download it for free and we can try that. So now that we have it downloaded and opened up, what we're just gonna do is hit the tab called drums and double click drum racks. And what we wanna do is just start touching whatever we have hooked up just to see what blinks. And whatever sort of little square that blinks, that is basically the square that is being triggered. So we can then add sounds to that little square so that we sort of trigger that sound whenever we touch it. So that is basically how I create sound and map it with water. And let's try it out. You can see the board blinking. You can see the square blinking as well. All those little tiny squares are possibilities of having things hooked up to them and having sounds hooked up to them. So now I can even add another sound to another node. This one is not hooked up, but it's just the wire, but we can actually just touch that wire, touch the node and trigger it. So you can have multiple things happening at the same time. And they just overlap. And if you know Ableton, you're able to actually just do more in terms of programming. You can even open up a you know a, a drum rack that's installed already on Ableton and use that as a way of uh, making sounds. So you're just using the drum rack that's already there. And when you have multiple, multiple sounds, you're able to create any type of music that you want. So we can see in the setup that I did for my sort of uh, beat pad water sort of system, all the wires are hooked up. 
I actually have the wires running under the board, through the board, into this little box where I house the terminal and the very conductive board. So now I have 12 different water cups that I can map out the different sounds. And what's great about this is that it is almost automatic. Once I'm right near the water, it triggers. So I'm able to make a beat without latency. So now that you have Ableton free for 90 days, you are able to use all of their sounds on the different sort of uh, nodes and the water cups that you want and just go ham uh, on creating as much sound as you desire. You can even do voices like this. So the last thing that I want to give you guys is that you're able to Google MIDI notes, check out the image and see the MIDI note map. So basically in that code that I was highlighting the MIDI notes, you're able to change the number in co that corresponds to the notes and change up to any note that you want. So when you get sort of really advanced, this is really, really helpful uh, changing up those notes to some different ones. So hopefully you like the video, you like the step-by-step -step on how to do something like this. Just being creative, you know, I gave you the tools and the resources, all the different resources I'll have listed in the description. Um, if you have any questions, make sure, sure you throw that in the comment section. Or if you have any video suggestions that you sort of want me to do with the art and tech stuff, throw that into the comment section as well. And, you know, just like and subscribe and just share as much as you can to support the video and the channel and everything. Uh, because I love doing stuff like this and love sharing sharing you know how to do stuff like this in the art sort of world so definitely like I said if you can just share it as much as you can and I'll try to make more videos like this and then I will see you next time peace